So because of the nature of metals, when you weld this, I'll give you an example, because I can turn this up the other way. When you weld this, this is what you're going to get. Okay, it won't sit flush because it's warped and it's moved with the welding. So what I recommend you do, I take a piece of timber, put it right in the centre, right, and just do this. Do that a couple of times, and you'll have the bottom plate that doesn't wobble. You need to measure first at the halfway point. All right, get a scribe, scribe in your 10 millimeter mark there for your halfway. All right, and measure down 35 millimeters. Okay, mark that, punch it, then measure down 95 millimeters from here down, mark it, punch it, eight millimeter drill bit, and that will set you up for your Merbau bracket, which will be bolted on. And then we will weld this to our uh, bottom plate. We're going to do that in a second. So once we've drilled these holes, then we can uh, get this welded in place uh, for our bracket to attach to. So that's what you need to do, guys, to get this bracket set up for your traction loss motor. So once you've got that 300 millimeters cut and those holes drilled at 35 and 95, then you'll take a piece of your Merbau and you'll measure 150 millimetres in length of your 140 by 20 Merbau and you'll cut it at 150 millimetres long. This is my existing bracket that I'm about to cut down. It was too long from my three degree of freedom motion sim. I'm cutting it down to be a 150 millimetres in length. Then you'll place your 20 by 20 millimetre box that you've drilled your eight millimetre holes into and you'll place that box guys 30 millimeters in from the edge of your piece of Merbau. You'll see here I'm showing measuring 30 millimeters, then place your box on and then with a pencil, just mark through your eight millimeter holes on your 20 by 20, mark them onto the Merbau. Make sure you do this straight. All right, make sure your piece of box is straight on that Merbau because if you mark your holes crooked when you put your bracket on, it will be sitting crooked on your piece of 20 by 20 when it gets welded in to the bottom plate. So make sure your box is straight before you mark your holes. You know, a little piece of Merbau here that attaches to our 20 by 20, all right, and where our connection from our traction loss rod comes into our Merbau, as shown, guys, I've just used a tie rod end, welded it up to make it rigid, or you can use one of those M12 hoop rings, whatever you want to use. This is how it's all set up, okay? And that's why I was saying that the 20 by 20 sits flush to the top of the Merbau here. This is 150 millimeters in length. What I've done is I've cut this down, okay, and made it narrower. Normally these are 140 wide. If you sit it flush with the top of your Merbau, and you keep it at 140, it'll be too low and it interferes with the traction loss axle. Okay, the axle won't be able to come under this. So I had to cut mine down to be 125 millimeters in width. Now you could leave it at 140. I've got a circular saw, so it's not a big deal for me to cut a bit of timber. You might struggle to cut that. You could indeed leave it at 140 wide, just lift it up. So then your timber sits up here Okay, so it clears, and then you don't have to cut it. You could keep it at 140 wide and just set it above your um, 20 by 20 box here, all right? Now, the other thing I will say, too, is technically, I could have my rod connection here where my tie rod's coming through here. I could have that much closer to here if I wanted to, so then there's less stress on the piece of timber. I've got that bar and the, where the tie rod comes through here and where it's uh, connected at the back here with a M12 nut and washer, I could indeed move that closer to the actual piece of 20 by 20 box, resulting in less stress on the piece of Merbau. Mind you guys, this has been like this for a very long time at this distance, and there's no signs of this being stressed at all because we've got bearing insert wheels. There's not a lot of stress on this piece of timber with the way the push rod works off the traction loss axle. So that's up to you. There's no reason why you couldn't move this connection much closer. As long as it's not touching the metal, 
to keep it isolated, that's something you could do as well. So that's how that is set up, and that's the size. So my size for reference, 150 in width, 30 millimeters in, are where my bolt holes are drilled to give that lots of uh, timber before the holes. 150 by 125. So I've cut that to 125 for 140. So then the axle comes under it and clears. That's keeping this flush with the top of the 300 millimeter 20 by 20 box. Now I'm going to get this welded onto our traction loss plate. So picking up from our previous video, guys, where we cleaned off the very corner, top edge corner of our traction loss uh, plate. What we're going to do now is weld this piece of 300 millimeter 20 by 20 by 2 mil box up into that corner. So what I'm showing here is how to get it adjusted right into the corner. We want to place this guy so you've got about three millimeters of material from the bottom plate uh, into the box. Okay, so set up your box. You can see here I'm just using one of my uh, 90 degree magnets. You'll use that to set this and to get it sitting straight. Make sure it's flat on the plate and give yourself three millimeters right around the outside. Uh, set your 20 by 20 three mil in right around from your flat plate. So you've got material to weld from your flat plate into your 20 by 20 box. Now make sure when you place this, you place it with the holes you've drilled in this to take your Merbau running this way. See how I'm pointing here? Make sure the holes are running that way. Otherwise, your Merbau is not going to be able to sit on that correctly. You'll need to cut it off and do it again. Now, remember, we're welding into five millimeter plate here, and we've only got a two millimeter material. So that's why you set this in just three millimeters from the edge of your flat plate so you can concentrate the heat into the uh, flat plate and push it into the box. Now, you'll tack each corner of the 20 by 20 box as I'm doing here like we do for everything tack each corner first before you weld in earnest so then it's uh, held in nice before you start welding and it doesn't warp and, and uh, end up crooked on your plate so you can check it you can get your square you can put a square on it and check it right around uh, that was nice and square it hadn't moved in each corner and then like often I do, guys, I will actually run my wire brush around those tacks just to get them nice and clean before I weld over them in earnest. I um, just needed to get some clearance on my MIG hose there. It was jagged on something. So then, yes, once you've got a tack, guys, just go around like this and just get the whole thing welded in earnest. Concentrating your heat, the main heat, guys, into the plate. Just push your weld pool from your plate into your box and you'll be sweet. Now we're going to need to make some gussets, guys, to now brace our 300 millimeter 20 by 20 by two uh, piece of box here. Otherwise it's just gonna flex too much. It'll have too much stress if it's only welded to the plate on its own. So we're gonna make some gussets from some of our 75 by five mil flat steel. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second. And I'm gonna take a, an extract from uh, one of my other videos and place in here about how to uh, measure these and how to get them set up so then they're clearing your wheels as it goes through its range of motion, okay? And this, uh, you work out where your um, mid-frame is actually gonna sit uh, later in the tutorial when we couple our actual front pivot caster to the bottom plate. That's what determines where um, your wheels actually sit, whether they sit back or whether they sit forward. The main thing is that they must clear, obviously, our 20 by 20 here, and they also uh, need to be able to clear your gussets. So you will build your gussets and weld them on um, here after you've set up your front pivot caster coupling. So then your wheels are actually going through their range of motion. Your arc, your traction loss is going through its range of motion. Then you'll know how large to make these gussets. I'll give you the measurements for how I've built mine now, but I'll show you the process for doing this in case you have to do it from scratch. So we need to make two little gussets, two little pieces of bracing guys for your 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter by 300 box that is going to hold your piece of Merbau for your traction loss rod attachment, okay? Now, this is what I'm talking about. Now, the way to make these guys is just to take some 75 by five mil flat steel, this particular gusset that you'll make 
which is for one side of the 20 by 20, just cut your 75 by 5 mil flat at, a, at 100 millimeters in length. All right. See, this is a piece of 75 by 5. There's a 75 width. Okay. I've just cut a piece of that at 100 millimeters long. So let's pretend this piece of 75 by 5 is 100 millimeters long. Once you've cut it at 100 mil, just put your ruler right across from corner to corner like that. Mark it. Cut it along that line that you've marked. And then this is what you'll have. You'll have a, a, basically a triangle. And then this can be used as some bracing, as a gusset. Like this one, okay, that's been welded to the bottom plate, all right, where the wheels run, and then on to the 20 by 20, just like that. See how that's sitting there like that? You just weld it on to the center of your 20 by 20. So if you do 100 by 75, that will fit in there nicely, and it will clear your arc of your wheels. On the other side... This, this, this is got here's a gusset here, guys. It's the same, it's 100 millimeters in length high against the 20 by 20. But this time, you can't, you have to cut it at 30 millimeters. Okay, if you keep a complete 75 piece like this, all right, this is what will happen. So it will interfere with your wheels. So you have to cut a shallower triangle. All right, you've got to cut your gusset sort of down this way. All right, so then your base is only 30 millimetres wide. So it clears those wheels. If you're following my tutorials to the letter with all the measurements with the way that, uh, with the way that the pivot caster, where it's placed, okay, that means that's what's going to be the finishing length for your traction loss axle. So you'll need to cut those gussets at exactly those measurements. So then when this goes through its arc, it clears both gussets on the plate. That's how to do that. So we're just jumping forward a little bit here, guys. This is about to be in the video at the end of this video. But this will just help this all make a little bit more sense if I show this before the end of the video where we start setting up our mid-frame on the bottom plate. Because where our gussets go, guys, uh, on here and how we measure them is all based on how this mid-frame is placed on the bottom plate. So then your wheels and your arc through your traction loss range of motion all has clearance both from our 20 by 20 welded here in the corner and our gussets we are about to make. So I would suggest that, yes, go ahead and get your 20 by 20 uh, piece of box here welded in the very corner like shown here. Okay, but as you can see here, this is how the position of our mid-frame sitting on the bottom plate is determined. It You actually sit it on, you line it all up, and then you let it go through its arc, and you make sure that the wheels are all clearing the 20 by 20 bracket here, and then indeed, when you put your gussets on, that they will uh, clear that as well. So as long as the correct clearances are set up at the start here, and your wheels are going through their full range of motion, they're through full arc without leaving the plate, then you'll be able to determine how large those gussets need to be. So we're about to um, get to the beginning of this uh, process, at least in this video. It won't go through the whole lot. Guys, we're keeping the videos at about 20 minutes, but we'll start getting the mid-frame set up and we'll start going through this process in this video now anyway. So you'll see how to, you'll know how to measure your gussets once you've got your mid-frame placed on your bottom plate. Okay, to get our front pivot caster coupling coupled to our bottom plate, we need to do a couple of measurements and get a couple of things marked in, guys. First, we're going to mark in the midway mark of our 35, which is 17.5 at the front. This is where our hole has been drilled. This will become the front of our coupling. Get that drawn in, guys, 17.5. So where I've marked the center of my 35 here, by 65, right on the end, I'm gonna mark the center with my Sharpie in line with where I've scribed it, back and front. Very important measurement this, guys, because this will make sure that our front pivot caster is now square on our bottom plate. 
The next measurement you need, guys, is 75. So we'll turn this off. Close it. Turn it on. Make sure it's zeroed. The next measurement we need is 75 millimetres. Now that's because, guys, we need to find the centre of our bottom plate. At the front of our bottom plate, here, so our bottom plate is 150 wide, so it's 75 is its halfway mark. And you'll see here where I've put my scribe on at 75 millimetres, and I've scribed a line along the centre of the bottom plate here, where we've just marked our 35 by 65 coupling point on our box there. Those uh, marks that we've placed on that back and front, you need to line them up exactly with this line so then that coupling is square on your bottom plate. So hopefully this will all make sense now when we see it like this. So we're going to be basically placing that coupling with the marks that we've put on it the, at the back and at the front. We're going to line those marks up with that centre scribe mark on the bottom plate and we're going to let this go through its range of motion now roughly in position, making sure that that coupling is sitting in the center of the bottom plate at the front. Then you will carefully kneel on the mid frame over the top of your coupling, and then you will allow the mid frame to travel left and right. What you're aiming to do here, guys, are two things. The inside wheel, okay, on both sides, you're aiming to um, have that basically come right to the very bottom corner of the traction loss plate for its full range of motion for a full arc. So both wheels, both inside wheels you see here, I'm testing the other side now, it's out of camera so we can't see it. But when it comes back this way, you can see there that inside wheel, it goes right to the corner of the bottom plate. The uh, outside wheel, don't worry about that. It doesn't matter if that goes off the plate. That's really there just for stability to stop the mid-frame from being able to tip. So you're wanting the inside wheel to go right to the bottom corner and you're also wanting clearance from your bracket. They're the two things you're aiming to do when you're doing this test because this determines now where we're going to mark, clean up and weld this coupling. So we've got this pretty much now where it needs to be when we come to weld this in earnest, but we will still need to put this back on and go through this whole scenario again. This is just so we know roughly where we need to clean to weld. So you make sure that the front pivot caster frame there, that the bolt holes in the frame are lining up with the holes in our coupling. Okay, and then we're just going to mark around our coupling here on the base plate. We can then take this, move this out of the way. And then very carefully with our sandpaper flap disc, clean along both sides of our scribe mark. We've got to be very careful we don't take our scribe mark, mark off because we will, we will then be bolting our little coupling here to the mid-frame um, pivot caster. We'll, we'll bolt it together, then we'll put it back on uh, roughly where we've cleaned. So we need to not lose that scribe so we can put it back on, line it all up again. Then we'll go through that whole process again of running the mid frame through its arc to make sure we've got our clearances, etc. We'll clean up the bottom of our coupling here, make sure it's completely clean, ready to be welded in earnest onto the bottom plate after we've checked all our clearances and our arc. Well, that is your lot for today. So until I see you in the next tutorial, you guys stay safe, stay healthy. Take it easy, Abby.